The St James was always the, the jewel in the crown as far as my father was concerned. And although he built a few cinemas later, smaller ones, which he loved, the St James was always his main passion. My uncle, of course, who managed it well, you could say nothing wrong about the St James in his view. And he, he delighted in making people happy. He would stand at the front in his tuxedo for major shows, welcoming guests, as they did in those days. He just loved this theatre. Well, Sir Benjamin Fuller was the person that built it, um, and um, Henry White was the person that designed it, both big in the theatre. Uh, the architect, Henry White, built a lot of theatres in his days, quite spectacular, including this one. The State in Sydney, people will remember. Uh, the St James in Wellington was one of his. So a very, very good architect who specialised in theatre. And Sir Benjamin Fuller and his brother uh, were entrepreneurs. They hailed from England. They came from a stage family, so they had theatre in their blood, I think, as most people do when they get it. Uh, and uh, they started uh, building theatres, live theatres, because that was the only entertainment of the day, um, live theatres around New Zealand. And the St James was one of them. And I think it was their, their best. They called it the Theatre Perfect. I think that's a perfect description of the St James. We should use that again. It was a big deal for Auckland. It, it opened in July with Archie and uh, it, not long after that it had the Italian Opera Company who sang, I think, how many operas was it? About nine operas in about 12 days. Absolutely unbelievable when you think of the staging of that. And, and uh, you know, you, can you imagine going to an Italian opera in Auckland? We don't do that these days. <laughs> It actually surprised me that they brought in movies so soon after the opening because it was built as a live theatre. But The Gold Diggers of Broadway, of course, was the first movie they showed here. And uh, that was apparently one of the, one of the first talkies. Uh, sound, uh, colour, quite amazing stuff. Certainly, I think in those early days, the St James was the place. I mean, it has always been a social hub of Auckland. And, uh, you know, really almost right up to the end, it was, you know, it was it. That's where you went if you wanted to see great theatre or see a great movie. And I think that's half of the charm of the theatre, is that people have fond memories. The lighting in here is superb. I've got a, a photo of one of them. Um, when it all works. Yeah, when it works. <laughs> Absolutely superb. It's, yeah. it's, uh, I, I won't say it's wired for it because you'll have to replace all the wiring, I would guess, but um, it's certainly, you know, when it is lit, it is absolutely superb. Considering the age and what a, um, a theatre, you know, it goes through, I'm, mm. I'm quite surprised how tidy it is. I think there was major work done in the 80s yeah. on, the, on, the, on the venue, in terms of electrically and yeah. mechanically. It's just really aged, it's caught up with it really. Yeah. Even if it's an old type cable, it's still relatively safe because there's no air for fire and it's encased in metal for, uh, for safety for earthing, so. Yeah. These are all originals, um, still okay. We can still reuse all these. I'm not sure at this stage just where they actually go. But no doubt we'll come across lights that aren't working and the more we get involved, the more we know just where these are going to go. What about the lighting around the edge of the proscenium? Around there? Yeah. Um, and then, then not the box, around the proscenium, around the stage. Oh, up so here. You can see there's a few bulbs. Yeah, again, I would, assume that they're, I would say they're almost exactly the same as what we've done here. We actually haven't got that far. No. no. But I would assume they've done exactly the same as what they've done with all these other fricades. Just have the light hidden. So, yeah. I mean, <coughs> so that would be, be, be a prime candidate for strip lighting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and you could do it so easily too. I mean, what, you know, for what 
for what it costs for a, a five metre strip of LED, I could put an LED around there and that would just, just come up beautifully. But again, um, that's how they did it in those days. It's been two months since, the, since that media launch. How's the project been going? How are you feeling about it? Um, I'm actually feeling really positive about it. I think um, the more we know, the more we know what the problems are, and then we can find a way around them. Um, in, in reality, it's, uh, yeah, every, every time we come in here, we find something new. Heritage people. Yep. Um, how have you found your dealings with the council's heritage unit? Uh, I've been dealing a lot with uh, Noel Reardon, the heritage manager, and um, you know he's great. He really is. He's really supportive, really understanding. Well, it's great to see progress after all those years of like, just sitting. It's fantastic. At the moment, we're sort of putting together the whole restoration proposal, um, but at the moment, it's all things like you know the, the painting of the walls, the wall colours. You know, what exact shade are they going to be, and what's the technique used to apply that? It's full of challenges, it always will be full of challenges. At this stage of the game, some of those can seem um, insuperable, but you work your way through them one by one, and I believe in being solution-based. There may be things where we, we have to give way on particular issues, be they Building Act or um, economic or whatever, but rather than um, fading at the prospect of such a humongous task, I think the, the delight is working with problems as they arise individually, one by one, innovating and finding solutions. But the task here is to get it back to 1928-29 so the place looks authentic as it was intended to be, rather than these nasty sort of cream colours that were applied later to clean things up. So what do you think the original car was? Of the stone walls? Mm. I think it's, we've just come to the conclusion it's actually a plaster. We've got a, a different surface colour on it here, which might need a bit more analysis. Um, it was a darker and slightly more lush colour than the later tendency to paint it creams and flat enamels. Yeah. We're fairly lucky in that this, these particular panels don't seem to have been meddled with. So they may indicate precisely what we've got under all the indifferent coats of paint in the rest of the building. In the Civic Theatre, relief panels like this were always gilded. We discovered that through scraping back. But in here we've got very dark bronze overcoat downstairs. But in these two particular panels, there's no trace of that. So an interesting aspect of this untouched piece of the false ashlar masonry is that the pointing colour, which is paint, um, has been clearly hand painted. Very, very accurately for the most part, just a f few telltale traces of uh, over paint here. Maybe it was late Friday afternoon. Mm. In a hurry to get to the pub. The whole effect is basically designed to mimic stone, isn't mm. it? That's mm. what we're seeing here. Mm. So, the, so it's not stone, it's plaster, but it's designed to look as if it's stony. Yep. Yeah. And then we've got the very interesting thing of these capitals up here with a rather blasé sort of grey and silver and bronze, but just around the corner of it, we've got the much more lush sort of dry brushed deco look, which is rather lovely. Thanks to a speaker box that actually covered that part when the capitals were repainted, we've got one little clear piece of evidence about uh, what was the original look. The big decision we have to make here is can we realistically remove the paint right throughout no, I don't and, think, I don't and go think. back to this finish or do we have to go with a modern paint finish? I think and to remove it yeah. back to this would involve scraping off things like that dark coating that you see on the plaster in some yeah. places and that's sufficiently damaging to, I think, say no to that sort of process. Yeah, I don't think we should rule it out quite that quickly, George. It's a big decision. So, Steve, are you saying that you would like to actually, ideally, strip off all the paint <coughs> that's here now and go back to the original? I think, if we're, I think d depending on r available resource, all those kind of issues, but that is the ideal conservation finish. Yep. 
If this was a Roman yeah. ruin, that's what you'd do. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we've got a balanced practicality and cost yeah. with making it look like that. 